Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. I'm back with another video and today it's about this machine, the Laser 200. I have made a couple of videos about this machine before. It's a kind of a special machine for me since uh, this machine was the first I owned back in the beginning of the 80s. And this is the machine I learned to program and learned about uh, computers with. So it's kind of nostalgic to me. Uh, one of the previous videos I repaired one that was uh, not working. However, in this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, the memory expansion uh, for it. Before I continue, I just want to say thank you to my sponsor PCB Way. They do a great job at producing prototype PCBs. I have used them many times, so I really appreciate the cooperation. Besides making pre-populated boards, they can also take care of other of your hobbyists' needs. They do PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, FPC Rigid Flex, Advanced PCB, CNC and 3D printing, and SMD stencils. And right now they are hosting their sixth project design contest. If you have made your own design that you want to share, then you can participate in this contest and there's great prizes for you to win. So head over to PCB Way right now. So this is the box of the Laser 200 and as you can see it has some nice features. 9 colors, 16k bytes ROM. Microsoft Basic, on-screen editing and advanced graphics and sound features. And it has uh, a whopping 4 kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> no, this isn't uh, the actual machine I owned back in the day. I sold it uh, many years ago. But recently I have gotten hold of uh, two of these in fact. And this one is uh, working perfectly. So I hooked it up and as you can see it is uh, functioning. However with only 4 kilobytes of RAM there's a lot of games and uh, programs that you can't run on this machine. Therefore you could buy some uh, additional RAM. This is a 16k RAM expansion but uh, unfortunately it's not working. I have one that is working so I, I can compare with but this one needs to be checked and see if we can do anything to fix it. This machine was made by WeTech uh, back in the day uh, from Hong Kong and it was kind of a, a toy machine because WeTech they made lots of electronic toys. Yeah, very basic computer and uh, yeah, very simple uh, design <laughs> of uh, the electronics and things like that but uh, there's a large community in fact that uh, works with this machine and new stuff is uh, coming and uh, the machine was released in different parts of the world with different names like VZ200 and there's also some uh, more advanced machines that came after that like the Laser 300. So this is the other uh, RAM expansion 16K and uh, I think this is working, hopefully it is, but it's uh, always good to have uh, a working component that you can uh, compare with. So first thing I'm going to do now is to actually check if these are working or not by writing a little program in BASIC. So the first thing I'm going to do is to check that I can in fact detect the, the extension. The RAM extension, I'm starting with my own, which uh, supposedly is working. It was working before, so I could always uh, hook up something and try to run a game or something that requires uh, additional RAM. But instead I'm going to use a basic command, pick some uh, registers to find out where the top of the RAM ends. 
To better understand how the memory works on this machine, I'm going to check with the technical reference manual. It has a, a memory map layout. And here it's uh, listed. It says that uh, the ROM start at address zeros and then uh, the video RAM at 7000 and the inbuilt program RAM is at uh, 7800 and upwards until 8 FFF. And after that the memory extension modules will be mapped. Looks like something like this. Uh, depending on the model of the machine you can have either 4K or uh, 6K inbuilt memory. We only have 4K. So let's check now. So this is uh, the simple program. You just pick two memory addresses and uh, calculate the address that are held in those two registers and print them out in decimal. Yeah, and uh, this machine without any memory extension, it points to 32767 as the top of memory. And that is 7FFF hexadecimal and that corresponds with the memory map. So that means if we add 16K, then we should add 16K to 7FFF. That means plus 4000 hex, which is BFFF. And BFFF is the same as 49151. So with the 16K additional RAM, this should be the top of uh, memory then. Let's check with my own RAM expansion then first. It goes in the back like that, simple. Oops, no colors. So there's no uh, visual clue on the screen when you start a machine, how much memory you have. So we need to pick those addresses again. 3898. Let's see now with 16K. So that's not what I expected. I get the same result as without. Let me try and insert it again. <laughs> I did in fact try this before uh, in preparation for this video and uh, then it worked. It gave another number. Let's see now. Nope, still the same. So I actually got 49151. Uh, before when I tested it, so <laughs> maybe something happened to my own memory expansion module now. <laughs> I'll try and clean up the edge connector and see if that helps. Yeah, it was quite black, so it could be bad contact. Yes, <laughs> definitely needed some cleaning. So this is mine. I'm actually trying to repair it for a viewer of my channel and his name is Ivar. Hello Ivar. Let's see now if this is better. Yeah, right. That was it. <laughs> so now I got the expected uh, number 49151, which is BFFF in hex. And that corresponds to the memory map layout. Okay, so now I'm going to test with uh, the other one. I have cleaned the connector on that one. Very good now. So let's see if we get any result at all. Hopefully it's not damaged in a way that can damage the computer. <laughs> I'll take my chances. Okay. Well, that was uh, something else. <laughs> Uh, sometimes when I turn on the machine I don't get color because my TV can't uh, tune in properly, but uh, it's nothing wrong with the machine. Damn, the power switch actually snapped. <laughs> I can't turn the machine on. It's all loose. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> always something, isn't it? So then I get a little repair job also um, <laughs> with that. Well, I have another laser 200. I'm going to switch to that. This is the other one. Just going to double check that uh, I still can see <laughs> the memory extension. Nope. <laughs> okay, going to clean the contact there as well. Yes, <laughs> cleaning that edge connector too helped. <laughs> 49151. Okay, now let's uh, test uh, the broken one. 
Okay, that gives us a faulty screen. Seems to start up <laughs> with some different faults here. Definitely this uh, makes the machine fault. Didn't break it, did I? Nope, <laughs> luckily. I cleaned the connector really good, but uh, nothing helped. So definitely this is uh, not working. And uh, yeah, let's open it up and see what we can find. I have the schematics for uh, the RAM expansion here. I found this on the VSET uh, 200, 300, laser 200, 300. <laughs> Facebook group, there's a lot of files there you can download. Just asked for help there and uh, kindly enough they just replied within uh, minutes and I found it. No less than six screws on this. Okay, it has a massive shield that's soldered on so that needs to be removed. Yeah, that shield is soldered uh, on and uh, I'm just going to desolder it. So uh, yeah, what could be wrong with this? Well, I don't know. I never experienced uh, these kinds of memory modules before. It can be, of course, memory chips or it can be some of the control logic chips, obviously, or something completely different. So if we take a look at uh, the schematics, don't know if you can see this, but uh, it has uh, 9 volt in and it has minus 5 volt and plus 12 volts. So uh, yeah, and uh, there's 8 memory chips and there's a couple of ICs here. It's uh, 2 LS157 and 2 and one LS74 uh, and uh, one twenty-three, and there's uh, there's some resistors, diodes, transistor, two transistors, so <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. There are actually modern variants of uh, memory expansions for this computer. I haven't tested out any myself, and uh, I heard people have built some using my desoldering gun just to remove most of the solder. That's the quickest. I think it's loose. Yes. All right. So here we have, uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on. <laughs> Just going to clean up those uh, ugly solder points there. Um, yeah. Definitely looks like there has been some re rework on this, these ugly solder joints here and yeah, and a couple of the chips seems like they have been reworked. Um, hmm. Okay, first I'm going to check if we have any shorts be between the, the ground and the voltage lines. And the best way to do that is to check between um, capacitors if there's a short on a capacitor then there's definitely something major wrong doesn't seem like there is where is ground where yeah it's on the edge here is ground and i also found that ground is uh, on this pin there also check that we have ground on the chips that we don't have any broken traces They all look good. I'm actually going to have to take off uh, this shield here as well. I have removed the shield on the memory chips and I've been probing around just to see if there's any sort of uh, broken trace or anything. See that every pin on every RAM chip is connected the way they should and yeah. All those things and I can't 
uh, find anything uh, wrong so yeah the next part is actually to try and uh, power this on I think and uh, yeah this card is divided into two parts you have the power part and you have the logic part and it takes 9 volts input and then it from the 9 volts in it generates uh, minus 5 and plus 12 volts for the RAM chips and it also gets uh, plus 5 volts from uh, the machine itself. So I'm thinking maybe first I try and hook up a 9 volts input on this and see if we find the minus 5 and plus 12. I set my bench power supply to 9.5 volts and the maximum uh, 400 milliamps and uh, now I'm gonna figure out how and which pins to connect to to power this up. So I think this is the correct setup. Uh, ground is all the way there and the second one there is uh, the 9 volt. Um, actually double checked uh, from the computer and it was actually pin number 2 that had 9 volts. So. Um, yeah, and to, to measure the minus 5 and uh, plus 12, the 12 volts should come uh, next to uh, the little coil there and the minus 5 volts should be next to one of the diodes. So I'll just probe around a little bit and see if I can find it. I turned on the power and it consumes uh, just 71 uh, milliamps. So. Uh, that means there's uh, no short at least. So I think here should be 12 volts. Yes. So that's correct. That's uh, 12 volts dead on. And then we need to find the minus 5. It should be also next to a diode. Yeah, and we also have 12 volts to the RAM chips, but uh, I can't find any minus 5. Nope, no minus 5. It's hard to read the diagram. It should be on, uh, yeah, it looks like pin 1, but uh, there's only 400 millivolts. So maybe that's the issue. I don't know if this actually requires you to have... Uh, plus 5 volts in. I can't see any plus 5 volts uh, connected to the circuit here. So no minus 5 volts. And anyway, I think I'm gonna place the card in the computer because I couldn't find any shorts and no over voltages here. So I think it should be safe even though it crashes the machine. So let's try that and then we can measure on the chips see if we get the minus 5 volts then. So I started the machine and it still doesn't uh, boot up but um, yeah let's see now if we check uh, some of the chips do we have plus 5 volts yes 4.9 that's good and then uh, the 12 volts oh that's my TV and making a noise we have 12 volts but no minus 5 volts on the RAM chips all right, so then we back to this part of the circuit here, and uh, yeah, that's um, probably the issue. Um, there isn't much there. There comes uh, output from the transformer, and then you have uh, a couple of diodes and a resistor and two capacitors. So I'll check on those, see if I can find anything wrong there. The two capacitors in that circuit is uh, these two 47 microfarads. I'm gonna try and uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna solder them out and uh, check their values, see if they're good. Because measuring them in circuit will probably give a wrong result because both of those are in parallel with a resistor between. So not sure what that result would be then. Okay, testing uh, the caps. Yeah, 50 microfarads, so that's good. And the other one was the same, so no problem with those caps. Since I already pulled out the caps, I'm gonna replace them with a couple of new ones. The 220 ohm resistor there, it's uh, the one over here. Let's just check that quickly. I doubt it's something wrong. Yeah, it's 217, so 
that's okay. Then we have two uh, diodes, one there and uh, one there. So try to measure those. Yeah, that one blocks in one direction. Let's check the other. Yeah, 480 millivolt voltage drop in that direction. I don't know the values or kind of these uh, diodes. It doesn't say on the schematics. So I don't know if that's correct, but at least it uh, blocks one direction then. Checking the other diode. Yeah, blocks in that direction and uh, 600 millivolts voltage drop the other way. So seems to be good that too. <laughs> so then all the components here are uh, seemingly fine. So that leaves us with the transformer. This is the transformer and uh, yeah, it seems to contain two transformers. Uh, <laughs> one for uh, the minus five and one for the plus 12 volts. So I don't know this kind of transformer. It seems to have uh, two, four, six, eight, nine pins on it <laughs> so i tried to power up the nine volt circuit here and try and measure a little bit on that transformer see what we get so it's hard to see but uh, it's written five and six so i guess that's pin five and six and uh, there's no numbering on uh, this one let's assume it's uh, from the left one two three four five and six the two top ones <laughs> all right so we know we don't have a uh, minus five volts so something is wrong with this part here and i uh, Talk to my friend uh, Chell uh, over at Koiro's Retro Innovation. You can find him on YouTube. He has a lot of great videos and he actually explained this circuit to me a little bit uh, better than I understood it myself. And he said that this part of the circuit is an oscillator circuit that actually drives uh, the little transformer and produces the AC current uh, through the transformer and told me to check with an oscilloscope to see if I have that AC current on this side and if not it is probably one of these two transistors that's not working anymore. So that's um, my next step now to check for that. So I checked a little bit around and this uh, which is labeled pin 6 here which goes uh, into the circuit here with the diode uh, is actually this pin number 5 out of the transformer. So that means I can use my oscilloscope uh, there because we have continuity between there and there and this is the end of that diode. Okay, so now I have hooked up the oscilloscope, so if my assumption is correct, we should have a signal uh, on this pin here. Well, there's nothing. Zero volts, zero hertz. And if I check uh, there on ground, it actually has, I'm not sure if that's ground, I think there is a signal, probably that is going to the 12 volt side, I'm not sure. But I'm going to take Koiro's hint and desolder the two transistors and check them out. Because I have no way to test the transistors uh, in circuit, I'm going to desolder them and try and see if I can test them with this uh, little tester. So I desolder them. Let's see if we can pull them out safely. Yeah, there. Okay, now let's see what we get. Not really sure about this tester, if it can test everything, but... Yeah, it says it's an NPM and uh, 633 millivolts uh, voltage drop. Yeah, looks to be okay. <laughs> With my knowledge of transistors and uh, testing them, this looks okay. I mean, if it was a broken one, uh, the tester would not recognize it as a transistor. Let's try the other one. Yeah, 
Yeah, same there. Transistor seems to be good. <laughs> okay, so that might have been a dead end again. So this is kind of a mystery. I opened up my own um, memory expansion unit here and uh, checking on that and uh, yeah. Let's see, do we have minus five? Yes, definitely we have. And uh, let's check the signals out from uh, the transformer. Yeah, that's like 70, 80 kilohertz. Yeah, there's activity. Yeah, definitely that's uh, where the minus five part comes out. Definitely that is working. So what can be the problem with the one that is not working? <laughs> Since it either is uh, a fault in the oscillation circuit uh, or in the actual uh, transformer itself, I'm going to try and desolder this uh, little capacitor that's uh, here and uh, see if that is okay. If it is the transformer itself that is broken, I'm for sure cannot fix this because uh, yeah, I definitely don't have these kinds of components lying around. Nope, that capacitor seems to be good. 13 nanofarad, it should be 10, but I guess that's uh, okay. All right, so it's been a while now and uh, I have done some more things uh, without filming. I tested all the rest of the caps, including that uh, 10 nanofarad there, and they are all good, so nothing wrong there. And all the resistors have the right values, so I checked everything now except this little cap and the actual transformer so I have to bite in the apple now and uh, yeah pull it out and replace it with the uh, one from the working card see if it actually is that that's broken the reason I didn't do that right away was because uh, yeah there's nine pins and I imagine it can be hard to desolder it but uh, I have no choice I'm gonna do it Seems to come easy. Yeah, that went smooth except for two of the pins are on some larger ground uh, planes there and uh, didn't clear those holes. So most of the solder is gone but they're still stuck. So I'm using a little uh, braid here to, or solder wick, to remove more of the old solder. Yeah, eventually it came loose uh, without damage. Gonna clean up uh, the stuff here and then I am gonna replace it with the other one. Actually, one pin was uh, left behind and it <laughs> came out of the component. However, um, this seems like uh, it's not connected to anything, so I don't think. I damaged anything luckily, hopefully. I can't see anything there where the pin was. It's just plastic and nothing else. And yeah, it seems like some of the other pins also are just for support and not in use. Uh, because the pins that are in use, they have these small wires coming from uh, the transformer and they go down below there. So. Here's the inside of the other board and it looks uh, almost uh, exactly the same except this transformer is uh, a little bit different. It has a casing around it. So I'm gonna desolder that, try to be more careful and see if it works in the other card. Yes, that one came out a lot easier and uh, no damages. Just gonna clean up a little bit and uh, solder it in. Try not to use too much uh, solder since I'm uh, taking it out again. <laughs> All right, it's in. Let's see now. Do we still have a problem? 
Yeah, let me check the RAM. It has 12 volts still. Yeah, minus five. <laughs> so it's fixed. <laughs> it was the transformer. Uh, okay. Well, that was that part at least. Uh, the minus five volt rail is back, but uh, does it work? Um, I need to test it in the machine and see if it's possible to find a new uh, one of these and uh, yeah, looking at it, it actually seems like there is a little loose wire. Maybe it can be fixed. I'll take a, f a closer look on that uh, in a bit. Let's see now. Yeah, look at that. The machine now works with that card in. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try that uh, print peak command again just to check uh, what kind of memory we have yes we have 16k of memory so the card is uh, now working as it seems obviously to to verify uh, that the whole memory is working you need to do a memory test but uh, I'll call that a fix and I'll see if I can uh, find one of those little transformers later and see if I can replace it back then. I want to have my own memory <laughs> expansion module fixed as well. So if I take a closer look at uh, the transformer I <laughs> I can almost not see it with my bare eyes, but there is one little wire there hanging loose. So I wonder if that's why this doesn't work, that it's supposed to go down and down to that pin, uh, either that or that, I don't know, because uh, I can't take a, a look at the other one because it was in a capsule. So. So, I'm gonna try, see if I can solder that little wire <laughs> onto one of those pins. I zoomed a lot. Uh, definitely it is not long enough to go on that pin, so I think it's gonna go to that pin. Okay, this is way beyond my eyesight and unsteady hands, but I actually managed to solder on a little uh, thin wire to <laughs> that loose wire. And now I should be able to wrap it around and uh, attach it to that pin in the middle. Okay, that seems to be uh, good. Yeah, I think it is. I'm going to try that one. All right, in with the potentially fixed uh, little uh, transformer. <laughs> so I'm really hopeful here, but uh, I actually doubt that it will work. We'll see. Hooking up the board again. Let's see if we get some minus five volts. There's 12 volts and there's no five minus so that did not work so after finishing up this video i actually talked to shell my friend over at coiro retro innovations and uh, he actually offered to take a look at this memory module and see if he could do some tricks to either fix the broken component or replace it with something else so I'm actually going to send it away to him and uh, yeah, he'll probably make uh, his own video about this. In that case, I will link to that video later or comment on it in another video sometime later. Hello, it's me. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks and I actually got this back from uh, Shell alias uh, Koiro and he actually fixed it and <laughs> Yeah, it was a simple fix. I actually connected that little wire from the transformer to the wrong P 
pin and uh, he figured it out and he made a little bodge and uh, that uh, actually fixed it so I have tested it now and it worked uh, so yeah great news I'm gonna show you a couple of clips from his video because he made a video about it and uh, that video has already been released before this so uh, you can check out uh, that video in uh, the description below I link to it there so yeah Really happy about that. Thanks a lot, uh, Koiro, for uh, helping me out here. So let's see a couple of clips from his video. And this is the component in question. And here you have contact. Here I'm measuring in the collector output of the NA31X transistor and I'm not getting what I expected to get. I do have the ground plane here and here is the 5 volt, minus 5 volt and you can see it's minus oh, 5.1 on 4, that's good. And we have 12 volt, that's over here, yeah 12.11. Yeah, this was uh, how it looked when we uh, used the scope uh, earlier and before we did any changes. And this is the final result. I was now measuring on the um, collector, same as uh, last time. And you can see the duty cycle is no way better. It's not 50%, but this is how this is regulated, is how much this is on. Anyway, it was kind of fun to try and uh, figure out what was uh, wrong with this, I think. I, I'm not that familiar with the analog circuits like this, how to diagnose them and things like that, but uh, still learning a lot as I go. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see you the next time. And thanks a lot uh, for all the subscriptions and uh, all the comments and a special thanks to my patrons. See you, bye bye.